all of these people are at risk of increased health consequences and even death. Hospitals are asking many to do appointments online, skip follow-up visits, and in some cases, even delay treatments. I don't think our medical system across the United States is ever going to go back completely to normal. Hello, this is Vivek Goel. I'm Vice President, Research and Innovation and Strategic Initiatives at the University of Toronto and a professor at the Dalhousie School of Public Health. This U of T podcast will be giving you ongoing updates on what's next for the pandemic from my perspective. In today's podcast, I'm going to talk about the health consequences of the public health measures that we are now experiencing. The debate about reopening of society is often framed as one of health versus the economy. I'd like us to think about it as a broader discussion about health issues. There are many health consequences related to our public health measures. Most significantly are all the people that are waiting for postponed surgeries or medical appointments. For example, cancer patients are waiting for life-benefiting surgery. There are also patients who are newly diagnosed or suspected for cancer who have not yet had the diagnostic test to confirm their cancer. All of these people are at risk of increased health consequences and even death. For example, a recent study by University College London estimated that cancer deaths could increase by 20% over the next 12 months. There are also people waiting for cardiac surgery, hip and knee replacements, and many other conditions who are suffering as a result of the wait. We also know there are significant mental health consequences as a result of the isolation that people are experiencing. There are increases in domestic violence and child abuse. Children's development could be being delayed This is one of the most important indicators of lifelong success for children. There's decreased activity levels, poor nutrition for many, and increased alcohol consumption. All of these are risk factors for increased chronic disease. And finally, let us not forget that economic recessions themselves lead to increased death rates. So, As rates of COVID-19 go down, we need to carefully balance the consequences of continued public health measures versus the consequences of COVID-19, and not just frame it as an economy versus health issue. In my next podcast, I will talk about living in a world with COVID-19.